Now another Theravada uh, tradition visit from Burma or Myanmar. So Venerable Veru Riya Yana from <coughs> Myanmar. He would like to talk about the impermanence which is approaching to the happiness that we are normally teach, delay, or the people in our society, in our school, in our monastery. So, Venerable, the floor for you now. Respected Chairperson, respected all Venerable members of the Sangha, Prince and the Dharma, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen, Today, as I was suggested, I'm going to talk about our nature, impermanence, from Thiravara point of view. But actually, to see Thiravara point of view is a shameful. I'm ashamed of to see Thiravara truth. Because after listening something from this bandage, I came to realize that there is not much difference between Thiravara and Mahayana regarding impermanence also. Actually, I have given my complete topics, complete paper to the organizing committee. But unfortunately, as, since I have given lately, they can, uh, it cannot be distributed to you in time. Sorry for that. So since, uh, as I am a last speaker, I have to rush. I have to rush on the topic of uh, understanding our nature, impermanence, as described in the Theravada, typical literatures, with a brief introduction. When we carefully examine our lives, we see that we are always experiencing one of eight worldly conditions. That is, number one, getting what we want. Number two, getting, not getting what we want. Number three, having many friends and relatives. Number four, not having many friends and relatives. Number five, being looked down upon. Number six, being praised. Number seven, getting happiness. And number eight, getting sorrow. All these Eight conditions are called Atta Loka Dhammas. All these eight conditions are unavoidable for all human beings. But the thing, what we have to note is that nobody is experiencing only dim side, but one experiences a bright side also. The world does not give, it, does not give an extreme favor to anybody. Instead, it gives equal opportunity to everyone. One cannot possess only either good or bad, but has to face both good and bad. The Buddha said that this world of ours is an endless flux of existence. All are impermanence, ceaseless transformation, like a moving water course. Everything is a changing from second to second, moving from birth to death, and a changing towards decay. It shows that nothing is, nothing is permanent in the world, but everything is a changing all the time. The Buddha said that all conditioned things are impermanent, sabbe, sankara, anicca. Because conditioned things exist conventionally, what conventionally exists is changeable. And what is not changeable does not exist conventionally. Now I'm going to focus on Anicca, as described on Theravada literatures. The addition of Anicca, the impermanent nature of everything, is one of the three salient characteristics of all conditioned phenomena. That is Anicca, impermanence, Dukkha, suffering, and another non-eternal soul. 
when we want to talk about Anicca, we should not leave the other two also, that is Dukkha and Anatta, because all these three are related to each other and cannot be separated. In the Mahaveka of Diganikaya, it is said that there is no word of the Buddha which is out of three characteristics. It can be affirmed by the word of the Buddha from Dhammapada. All conditioned things are impermanent, sankara anicca. Here, conditioned things means nothing but five aggregates. In the Bodhisattva Mega Pali, there is a question. There is a question. Kain what is impermanence? The answer is that panchakara, five aggregates. That means the five aggregates are anicca. There is also another continuous question that why five aggregates are anicca? The answer is that because these five aggregates are having the nature of appearance and disappearance. In this regard, we can find a different form of similar answer in the commentary on Damas Sangani that all conditioned things are anicca because it has the nature of a disappearance soon after it had been appeared. To relate Anicca with Dokha and Anatta, the Buddha further stated in the Bodhisattva Mecca that whatever impermanent is a suffering, yang Anicca tan Dokha. Whatever suffering is impermanence, yang Dokha tan Anicca. They are related. Whatever that is very clear. Whatever impermanent and suffering are non eternal soul or are not conformity with our will and desire. There is no difference between these three. That is a reality. That is a true. That is a oneness. That is not three different things. We have to realize it as oneness. How the three different things can be oneness? But this Amida Mega Pali gives a clear definition that five aggregates are impermanent anicca because they have the meaning of a decay. Anicca kayatena. They are suffering, dukkha, because they are related with the danger, dukkha bayatena. They are not eternal soul because they have no essence, another asarkatena. Since they have no essence, they cannot last forever and they cannot be as we wished. For example, the trees which have no essence cannot be long lasting. Also, it cannot give much benefit to the world. Likewise, five aggregates have no, sense, no essence. They cannot be long lasting. Therefore, they are anatta, non-eternal soul. Here, if we carefully examine the meaning of anicca, dukkha, and anatta, we find their oneness. In Bhattisamita Megapali, it is said that anicca has the meaning of decay. Dukkha has the meaning of danger, while anatta has the meaning of having no essence. When something is having the nature of a decay, it's really in danger. If something is in danger, it cannot be long lasting, like a tree which has no essence. Therefore, Anicca, Dokha, and Anatta are not three separate things, but only one thing. One is of these three to be perfectly realized with one wisdom. In the Anicca Sutta of uh, Sayota Nikaya, the Buddha suggested the monks to see and realize all conditioned things as anicca. As a result, one will get bored with entire five aggregates. When one gets bored, one will not attach to it. When there is no attachment, one will no longer grasp anything thinking that this is mine. This is a sign of having no craving. When there is no craving, one will be free from all kinds of suffering. Therefore, the Buddha stated in the Dhammapada, 
Sabe Sankara Anicha Yada Panya Pasadi. Atane being the Doki is some mega we so dear. All conditioned things are impermanent. When one realizes it with one wisdom, then one gets a board, all kinds of a safari. This is the way to liberation. In the Mahawaka of Diga Nikaya, there is a stanza which said that Anicha Wata Sankara Opada Waya Damino, Opa Jedua Niro Jandi Desan Ubas Mosuko. All conditioned things indeed are anicca, impermanence, for it has the nature of appearance and disappearance. Having appeared, it ceases. Happy is the place where there is no appearance and disappearance. Therefore, to overcome sorrow, limitation, and all kinds of suffering, we have to see anicca as anicca. In the wake Panlasa Sutta of Ngotra Nikaya, the Buddha said that, seeing anicca, as nature is a wrong concept which results in the production of a suffering. And seeing anicca as anicca is a right concept which results in the production of a supreme happiness, which is nibbana, the ultimate goal of a Buddhist. In the Loka Dhamma Sutta of uh, Angotra Nikaya, the Buddha recommended the monks to maintain their mind as it is by reflecting the nature of impermanence when they encounter with the facts of life or worldly conditions. Then only one will be able to stand firmly in the world. Otherwise, one will fall down in life. The Buddha in the Girimananda Sutta of Engudra Nikaya asserted that conception or reflecting on impermanence can even cure sickness and illness. Now, it's a conclusion. The world we live is a momentary phenomena. We all belong to the world of a change. Everything fades, everything fades away like the leaves in summer and bubbles in the water and in the air as well. What is stable does not exist, and what exists is unstable. Thus, all human beings animals and material forms, everything in this universe are subject to the law of impermanency. Therefore, as the, Buddha, as the Buddha had suggested in the Mahapri Nirvana Sutra of Diga Nikaya, we should be always mindful that all conditioned phenomena are subject to decay and should struggle for the liberation from suffering. Handa dani bekwe amante amiwo. Waya dama sankara appamade na sambarita. May all of you be able to attain a liberation from all kinds of suffering by thoroughly understanding anicca impermanence as anicca. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Venerable uh, Yana from Myanmar. Uh, Theravada tradition is very. Uh, interesting point that he showed the approaching to the Dhamma, Loka Dhamma, to look at Loka Dhamma in the way that how we understand impermanence in our daily life. As I say, we have three Theravada monks from two from Thailand and one from Myanmar. And our Tibetan uh, tradition today, we learn from different uh, techniques approaching to sati, how to use mindfulness, how to attain nibbana, and how to be happy in the changing world, including changing of the world system of our being, especially venerable uh, who just finished his talk, he approached in which how we look at the world in Buddhist teaching, Buddha teaching. He referred to a lot of Pali language. You can see Theravada in Myanmar used uh, Pali uh, language based on the teaching most of the time, which is very interesting how to use the Tipatana in the teaching in Buddhism. The Theravada and Mahayana that we learn today, I must say that from start 
the early morning today, we find a very important part with His Holiness the Dalai Lama mentioned. The first part, he would like to use Pali school. The second part, he said it's better to be the language of the Sanskrit school. Because both schools today that we learn that use the same root apart from the language that we use for the teaching. It may be the best opportunity to start. Like most of the monks from Tibetan said, the first, but not the last. And we are intend to have another more, even more of this kind of session to make it our possibility to work between Pali school and Sanskrit school based on the teaching. So I'm here as the moderator for the speak. Now we have about maybe 20 minutes to be able to get your feedback. The question that you may ask for individual, which one you think you'd like to ask. Now, location for you. My question is to the Venerable from Myanmar. It is, as you stated, you know, to understand conditioning things uh, as a, uh, in permanent, as in permanence, oh. what kind of technique do you use in terms of the meditation? Do you use analytical meditation to understand them as in permanence, or do you use simply just observing the things and the events? Uh, actually, that's a depend on person to person. We cannot give a definite answer. Sometimes uh, we have to observe as it is. Sometimes, as you said, to, to gain a, to, to to gain a proper understanding, you know that things are as a impermanence. Do you, you know? Do you use uh, certain people can be can be you know the, have the understanding of things as impermanence without using any form of analytical meditation? I do understand anicca uh, properly. What we have to have is a proper intention. Proper intention in Pali, it's called yoni som manasikara. Yoni som manasikara. But things are not easy, as easy as eating, sleeping, or anything. But we have to devote, we have to devotedly do. We have to devote time, energy, and all everything. It's a not a overnight work that I want to say. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. One more question. Yeah. Yes, I, I have uh, one question of here on the topic of impermanence. So I think my question goes to you here, Venerable. Uh, so all if effective phenomena are impermanence, right? So I want, just want to know the cause of the impermanent. So the cause of the impermanent itself, the cause itself uh, is the cause of the change, right? The cause of the impermanent, or cause itself can, will be produced the effect, and also it's, it's a, uh, I mean, it's a causes for to change, changeable. So I want to know how the causes of the impermanence uh, can be, can, you know, make change for the, for the uh, effective phenomena. One question, and one question, is there any one cause or you need many different causes or is there any one causes which produce one effect? Actually, I, I, I cannot understand your first question. So far as the second question is concerned, when there is a, an effect, one effect, we cannot say that uh, there is only one cause. Right. There are, because of so many causes, there is a one effect. If there is one effect, we can consider that there are so many causes and supporting factors. 
that what we need. is that you need collective causes. Yeah, collective causes. Because yes. you just uh, see the rise. The rise is, uh, suppose the rise is effect. There are so many causes. Yes. So many causes. Petty is uh, there, the cause. And then pharma is the cause. And then hard work are yes. the causes. There are so many causes. Yes. So because of so, so many collective causes, so many, uh, yeah, then, of, then it makes makes one effect. changeable incident. Yeah. 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 That's what we believe. Yes. Traditionally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There is uh, quite a number of the people here. So I would like to take another two or three questions. However, we have limited time. So I'd like to take the one from here, please. My question is, uh, 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 I do have some clarification here to do. Um, um, ตังกะขะจิจระมาเวกิตุซุยตังตังกุซุดิเนเดนเดเบกิตุซุยบารายังเคเปอร์คังคังตุมจิออร์งาซุจิกุจิกันดุมาเรดิจิเคนกวย